on our super jumbo flying from London to Sydney has been forced to make an emergency landing in Singapore after one of its engines was shut down in midair. Qantas has now grounded all of its A380s and Singapore Airlines has said it's following suit. Well, the double-decker Airbus A380 is the world's largest passenger airline and it's only been in commercial service since 2007. And this has been described as the most serious safety incident in its very short history. The plane hit trouble at around about 2 a.m. this morning our time, just six minutes after taking off from Singapore Airport, where it had made a scheduled stop en route from London to Sydney. Now, Qantas described the problem as a significant failure in one of the plane's four engines. And one of the four structures that housed the engines was lost as the plane was flying over Batam Island in Indonesia. And witnesses there say they heard a, a loud explosion. Initial reports suggested the plane had crashed because of the amount of debris scattered along the flight path. Well, the Airbus then dumped fuel over Indonesia, remaining in the air for almost two hours, making itself light enough to land safely. It returned to Singapore's Changi Airport at 3.45 a.m. where it made an emergency landing. And all 459 passengers and crew on board disembarked safely without having to use the emergency escape slides. Well, Qantas has now grounded all six of its A380s, it says its chief executive is saying the suspension will continue until the airline is satisfied that the planes are safe to fly. Qantas also has another 20 A380s on order and says that deal will still go ahead. Well, uh, this is the announcement that passengers heard over the loudspeaker as the plane was forced to change its course. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, we have a technical issue with uh, our number two engine. Uh, we have dealt with this issue, uh, situation. Uh, the aircraft is secure at this stage. We're going to have to hold for some time whilst we do uh, light power load by the uh, dumping some fuel and a number of checklists we have to perform. And uh, as you can, I'm sure you are aware, we're not proceeding to Sydney at this stage. We're making our left turn now to track back towards Singapore. And uh, as we progress with this, uh, we'll keep you informed at this stage. Everything is secure. The aircraft is, uh, is flying safely. And we'll get back to you very shortly with further information. Thank you for your patience. See there, while that announcement was being made, seemed to be a, a little bit of uh, damage there as that uh, passenger filmed the wing. Well, uh, as they arrived in Singapore, passengers did say the atmosphere on board had generally been very calm. Yeah, for the first five minutes, there was a bang, and then another bang, and then that was it. We were very lucky to miss exactly when we missed the fuel tank or anything, so it could have been a lot worse. Um, but only when we stepped off the aircraft did we really see, you know, we looked into the aircraft, you could see the back ends. The pilot did his job. Yeah. He did a great job in terms of keeping everybody calm. There's a bit of humour as well in the cabin. So, but I think, you know. That wall from the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's a raving thing. So everyone's pretty happy. But, um, but I think the true, you know, the true extent was told when we were on the ground. Of course, the plane was supposed to go to Sydney, and a short while ago, our correspondent Ian Woods pulled us up to date from there. In, in many ways, they've had a fairly routine emergency landing from the point of view of the, uh, the airline and managed to land safely on the three engines that it is designed to do. And the fact that the uh, fire retardant was sprayed on the engine as a precaution and it landed and stayed away from the terminal uh, is uh, a precaution, as we said. But the passengers were able to disembark safely. And actually, the people who seemed to be most at risk were the people on the ground in this Indonesian island of Bataan who find debris raining down on them. And uh, miraculously, nobody was injured by that. But the significance of this, Dermot, is partly that it is the most serious incident affecting an A380 since it went into commercial service. And also, the very nature of it, as uh, that expert was saying there, it's a pretty catastrophic failure because it, even though it hasn't caused the, uh, the plane to crash, uh, what we have seen is that it's been uh, an, an, an uncontained engine failure. The cowling, which is supposed to protect the engine from uh, debris spilling out of it uh, if there has been a malfunction, clearly hasn't worked. The force of the explosion, whatever caused it, has caused the cowling to just rip away and it is just pure chance that some of that debris uh, didn't hit the other engine and could have caused problems there, or indeed the fuselage uh, puncturing the aircraft itself, which would have caused uh, more serious problems. And that is why uh, the investigation is now underway. That is why Rolls-Royce will have some questions to ask about uh, and to answer about uh, what has gone wrong here and why Qantas have decided that for safety's sake 
they should ground all 380s until the investigation is concluded. In what's in Sydney there, well, aviation expert John Ling is a former engineer for Rolls-Royce, the company who made those A380 engines, and many others. He joins us live from Portsmouth. Uh, hello there, Mr Ling. Um, I mean, Rolls-Royce engines are a byword for excellence. Were you surprised to hear that one of them seems to have failed? I'm very surprised, and uh, uh, we don't know yet whether it has failed, but it, uh, it certainly uh, points towards a, a in the engine, one of the blades, uh, maybe the, the turbine blade or, or a fan blade, uh, coming, coming off and causing further collateral damage, but uh, we don't know yet. I mean, what will investigators, I mean, obviously uh, the world's airline industry is uh, keeping a very close eye on this, so many of them using Rolls-Royce engines, what will investigators be looking at specifically? Well, they'll be looking to see um, the exact cause. If something has come adrift in the engine, uh, it's very unusual, uh, but these things are running at very, very high speeds and uh, very high temperatures. Um, uh, but the safety process uh, is, is very good. Uh, you can, there are, there are um, problems with engines, uh, not not often, but they're not that unusual, and the pilot will normally just get an indication of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, excessive heat or vibration, and they will shut the, uh, shut the engine down as a matter of course. Um, and of course they're all designed to be able to, to land uh, you know, with fewer engines, that's not a problem. Um, but they'll be more interested in the initial cause of, 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 the, uh, of the failure. Indeed. Um, I mean, are the engines designed to contain, those cowlings are there to partially uh, contain such a failure, as you described there, perhaps uh, one of the turbines breaking? Um, yes, well, that, that's one of the functions of the cowling. It's also, of course, to, to make it an aerodynamic shape. Um, but yes, uh, that you, you would hope that uh, uh, most uh, problems that have with engines are contained within, that, uh, within the cowling. Um, this has obviously been a catastrophic uh, failure, uh, allowing several things to, to hit the um, uh, hit, hit the cowling and, and break it. Um, that's quite unusual, very unusual. And I don't want to speculate too far, but um, when, when they do establish uh, the cause of what happened, I suppose, I mean, of the options, uh, the worst for Rolls Royce would be if it's a, a manufacturing or assembly fault, uh, and the best if we can call it that, would be uh, that there's been some maintenance problem. Um, yes, I, I very much doubt it. it's the manufacture of the engine. Uh, the, the engines are made to a very, very high specification, and materials are, 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 are very carefully chosen. Um, they're, they're, the process of, uh, of manufacturing is the best engineering in the world. So um, uh, I, I doubt if it's an, a, a manufacturing problem. It could have been um, uh, a, a maintenance problem, but there again, um, the maintainers don't normally go de deep into the engine and play with the blades, if that's what was wrong. Um, it could have been anything. Uh, it could have been another piece of, uh, of, of uh, the engine, not actually a blade that's gone through. It, whatever it was, it was quite catastrophic, um, but the pilot shut the engine down very quickly, um, and, as you say, uh, there was no damage or very little damage to, collateral damage to the main aircraft. Bearing in mind the engine is under the wing, and anything that goes through or past the engine uh, generally misses the plane, doesn't it? Well, uh, thankfully, in this case, that's for sure, and a happy outcome for all concerned. John Ling, thank you very much indeed for your expertise there. You're an expert. You used to work for Rolls-Royce. John Ling.